and we're you know giving you know doling out all this new money we don't have and so it's all going to be printed and and so that's going to destroy the value of the wages and the savings that Americans have and so that amounts to a tax but you know what the government is doing now with inflation is exactly what I predicted they would do because first they deny that there's inflation and they did that for a long time then they say okay we have inflation but that's a good thing because this is what we need we didn't have enough inflation so thank god we've got inflation then they start saying well okay it's a little higher than we really want but don't worry it's just transitory and initially transitory means temporary like oh the price hikes won't stick right after we get back to normal prices will go back down to normal then they change the definition of transitory to mean permanent meaning that well what's transitory are not the price hikes they're permanent what's transitory is how much longer they're going to be going up at this pace which they don't even know uh so they keep changing their tune and and, and moving the bar and it's okay because it's better than the alternative. It's the price we pay for prosperity. It's the price we pay for a strong labor market and income inequality and a Green New Deal. And whatever it is, they're just going to say we have to accept high inflation as you know, a fact of life. That, that's what's ultimately coming. I love what you've said before about how America used to be the world's biggest creditor. Now it's the world's biggest debtor and we're getting poorer and our standard of living is de decreasing. But at the same time, we don't look like we're living um, poor because we're basically borrowing to purchase other countries products. We bought their real estate. That's what rich countries do. They accumulate assets. What poor countries do is they go into debt to consume. They accumulate liabilities. That's what America is doing. America is the mirror image of the, of the country that was bestowed the privilege of issuing the reserve currency. Nobody would, would pick America today based on the characteristics of the world's biggest trade deficits, the world's biggest budget deficits, and the world's biggest debtor nation, where we owe more money than all the other debtor nations of the world combined. Uh, America borrows from the poorest nations on earth. It, it matched the 1% from last a month. We now have producer prices up 6.4% in seven months. Mm -hmm. So if this pace keeps up for the rest of the year, that's an 11% increase. We've never seen uh, producer prices up that much in one year, you know? Uh, and so this is record increases. Uh, consumers are gonna be feeling this as well. They're already feeling it. But the reason that the gold price sold off after these high inflation numbers came out is because everybody expects the Fed to do something about it. Oh, the Fed is gonna to have to get aggressive. The Fed is gonna to have to fight to put this inflation genie back in the bottle. And those are the complete disasters. That's where you have nothing but poverty and where governments have to build walls to keep their citizens in and shoot them if they try to escape, right? Communism results in misery. That's, it's, you know, communism is a form of socialism. So is fascism. These are all forms of socialism, but it delivers nothing but misery except to the, the people at the top who were in government. They get rich and everybody else is poor. Uh, but under capitalism, you have tremendous and widespread benefits for average people. And, um, you know, all the, the problems that people attribute to capitalism are the fault of government and government interference in capitalism. And the more we rely on government to solve our problems, the worse those problems are going to get. If we, a lot of times you just want to say, well, they're richer than me because they got lucky or because they're greedy or because they do bad things. Uh, and now we need to sick, you know, we need to use government to take some of what they have and give it, give it to me. You know, that's, that, that's the emotion that the politicians play on that envy which is right. a horrible uh, human emotion. And the income tax didn't come in until, I, be, I believe it was like 1913, and that was 7% just to be a tax on the rich, right? So should we be, I mean, yeah. how do you see taxes? And you know, the deal the deal that was made with the devil back then, it's the reason the people supported the income tax was A, because they weren't gonna pay it. But the government said, if we tax the rich with an income tax, mm -hmm. we'll get rid of the, 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 the uh, tariffs because the tariffs were paid by the middle class. And so the government said, hey, if we can have this income tax, we won't need the tariffs anymore. And so the public, you know, got behind it. And now, of course, the average American is paying a much higher rate of tax than was originally envisioned for the Carnegie's or the Rockefeller. We can't take 
50%, 60% of what somebody earns. This is not fair. That's not right. You, well, know, so uh, you know, so that's where the objection should be also on the constitutionality of these type of taxes, but just on the morality of it. It is not the right thing to take so much from somebody. Well, so how much should we be taxing the wealthy versus the middle class? Because that's that's the main platform for a lot of the Democratic politicians, right? It's like we're going to tax the wealthy. We're going to get that money back and redistribute well, it. Look, I don't believe in the income tax at all. I don't even think it should exist. I think we should just have consumption taxes and everybody should pay the same rates. Obviously, the rich have a lot more money to spend and so they'll pay a lot more in taxes. But I don't think that rich people should pay taxes that uh, middle class people or poor people don't have to pay uh, because, you know, there are people are always going to vote for taxes that don't affect them. Every the school teacher should pay the same rate as the financier. Uh, obviously, if somebody is making $10 million a year at a 10% rate, they're going to pay a lot more than somebody who's making 50000 a year at a 10% rate. But everybody is still contributing 10%. So we're all in the same boat. And if they want to raise taxes, well, they have to raise the rate on everybody. Right. So if we're going to go from 10% to 12%, we're all in it. So now do the people making 50,000 want to support it? Well, if they do, if, it, if they really think the government expenditures are worthwhile, they should be willing uh, to contribute to the support. It's just that the share prices are higher due to all the inflation and all the cheap money. But there's also a lot of companies that only exist because of the Fed. They don't exist because they're satisfying our needs. They're not producing goods and services and providing them at a profit. Uh, they're losing money. They're destroying value, right? They're taking resources, land, labor, and capital, and destroying value, yet they still exist because they can sell stock. And why can they sell stock? Because of the Fed. 